Det kan jeg sige, at det kan være rigtig simpelt, men det er So we last four up here that are all here, so we can have another series of questions. And we'll continue with our order once again. Just a half time, uh, you are going to be going first on this question. Would you reform education funding in New Hampshire? So how? I think it's important to realize that the education funding track we have right now is insufficient for what we need in the state. And the principal reason for that is we're not able to partner where we need the money the most. But the fundamental issue is are we getting the proper education for the dollars we're spending? That's a more important question. And is that money being wisely used across the state? But keep in mind, it's the local the province of the local school districts in terms of how they effectively use them. So I, I'm against uh, uh, additional property taxes, statewide property taxes, to bring up areas in the state that need it, but we have to eventually move to a system that allows us to target funds across the state. Our current system that has the judiciary determining where money goes in our state is not a good one. And we have to work hard, uh, and I would certainly entertain over long term a constitutional amendment, giving that right back to the legislature and the governor, taking it out of the hands of the, of the judiciary. Thank you very much, Mr. Hathaway. And now, Mr. Hemingway, your question. What solutions do you suggest for the Northern Pass project? Northern Pass is, uh, is clearly one of the, the hot topics of, of this election. I'm sure, we all would agree that everywhere we go, somebody asks us about Northern Pass, whether it's in the northern part of the state where the Walt and I are from, or in the north, the southern part of the state. It's, uh, it's something that people are talking about all over the state. I oppose the, the current proposal that has been put forward by North Pass. It is uh, not right for the North Country. It adversely affects property values uh, and, and ultimately has very little uh, financial benefit by the way of lowering the rate of electricity. Now, there are other proposals that have been sort of floated around. We've not seen an official one from North Pass, and so I can't make a decision on both those things. One uh, issue that I would love to see as part of this proposal is the ability to use those right away to screen or to, to you know, however we, we all decide to do it, but to get high property cable into the northern part, into the most rural parts of our state. We get high property cable, we build for us a technology infrastructure that is absolutely necessary for the expansion of our economy going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Hathaway. Our next question is once again for David Hathaway. Do you support a broad-based tax in New Hampshire sales or income? Why or why not? I do not support a broad-based tax, either sales or income, for our state. It is one of the elements of the New Hampshire advantage, but the key to not having a broad-based sales or income tax is not revenue. It's spending. It's spending. And that's why my plan for economic growth includes a two and a half percent reduction in spending every budget cycle to pay for the reduction in business property tax or business profits tax that we need to get our economy moving again. People talk about we don't have enough revenue to say that is not the issue. In fact, we just went through our last fiscal year and we hit bullseye when it came to revenue. The issue isn't revenue. The issue is spending. We do not have a governor who knows how to manage a budget. Even a bigger $5 billion budget. I can't imagine a CEO 
I have been given the leeway to miss my budget by a hundred million dollars. Thank you, Mr. Hatton. Thanks, Mr. Hatton. Thank you, Mr. Hatton. How do we propose to improve New Hampshire's current credit rating, which has been destroyed this past term by our current Democrat governor and the Democrat run House? Well, I think, it, uh, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you're feeling that big expansion, which has exploded our budget. Walter's reference to $100 million. Yeah. This is the well, Walmart gets $100 million overspending. That is in the, the Health and Human Services. That is direct correlation. The old eligibles as part of the Medicaid expansion plan. They're estimated that this would be as much as $250 or $300 billion by the end of this year. We see an insolvent a pension system. I'll mention $4.5 4 billion. That's correct. There's another $1.2 billion on top of that for health services. Close to a $6 billion unfunded pension liability in our state today. We are relatively insulted as a state when you look across the board. How would we fix that? Well, we immediately repeal programs which are sending us over the budget. So repeal Medicaid expansion. We have a business flat tax proposal which plugs holes that the, plugs holes that the Medicaid enhancement tax ultimately has created through an unconstitutional ruling. So we have a plan which generates revenue for the state that plugs those holes. And if we can show to the credit bureaus these plans and then a control on the ultimate spending that we are going to be doing as a state, we can show to them our credit worthiness. And then we can get our bond credit improved once again. We should be a AAA state. We absolutely should do that. By not having a AAA rating, we are costing the taxpayers of New Hampshire. It's something we must address. Thank you, Mr. Hemingway. Explain why New Hampshire produces an abundance of electricity, electrical energy, and yet our power bills are so high. Because we're on the street of the grid. Very simple. We, we actually produce more electricity than we do. Because of Seabrook and other facilities. But we operate in the regional grid. The regional grid has restrictions on it. We also have imposed renewable portfolio standards that require us to use electricity that comes from non-economically viable sources, like wind turbines. Wind turbines that I can see out the back of my coal gulf. Like biomass plants, do biomass plants that do not exist without the subsidies of rate payers. And ready. We look at the regional greenhouse gas initiative and we look at the our, uh, renewable portfolio standards, they add another 6% to our rates. We need to repeal them. Get out of this program. And I propose that as part of my economic development program. We have to get our rates down. We talked a little bit about Northern Pass. The question is do you support or not support Northern Pass? How do you make Northern Pass work first and foremost for New Hampshire? Not for the region, but for New Hampshire. We need that 1200 megawatts, but we need it in New Hampshire. Thank you very much, Mr. Hatton.
too much executive power into the office of government. So they created the executive council, it's a unique structure. You look across the country as far as states is concerned. So uh, I think it's great. I think we should limit the executive power, both governors and presidents, quite frankly. Uh, I think that if uh, the president had an executive council, we might see less, less uh, of the overreach that we are presently seeing. So it's constitutional. And I see it as part of our state structure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Continue with our order of uh, who takes the question first with Mr. Havenstein. And the first question for you In your opinion, what is the primary function of government? The primary function of government is to serve the people of the state of New Hampshire. And the people decide what functions they want them to perform. Simple constitutional. In your opinion, what is the primary function of government? Fortunately, my opinion doesn't matter. Right? The Constitution lays it out for us. Government is, is defined to protect the individual's rights. That's what it's there for. It's not for our welfare. It's not for our protection. Right? It is there to protect rights. And when an individual starts to lose their rights, government has the authority to constitution to once again. So, yes, my, yes, my opinion doesn't matter about what, what the proper role is here. The Constitution lays that out. We have seen a massive, massive growth of our state government. We have seen a, 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 a trample of individual freedoms and individual rights over and over and over again. And we need a government who understands the constitutional bounds of our state government and is willing to fight for that. I am that government. Next question for you. Why would you be a better governor than Maggie Hassan? First and foremost, I'll serve you. I have special interest, not personally, your interest. But first and foremost, beyond that, I will deliver economic growth for our state based upon proven, <coughs> proven leadership and proven concepts. Responsible planning executed flawlessly. We cannot stand, tolerate, or afford two more years of mismanagement of the budget, mismanagement fiscally, Lack of leadership in terms of where we're going. We cannot afford two more years of Maggie Hassan. And I'm going to make sure that my experience, which stands in stark contrast to hers, my performance, which stands in stark contrast to hers, is highlighted to every voter in this state. And when they recognize how far behind we fall to other states in our region, and recognize what it's going to take, experienced, proven, thoughtful leadership, they will vote for a change in time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next question to you, Mr. Henry, why would you be a better governor than Maggie Hassan? I think there are a number of reasons why I would be a better governor than that NASA. It all really comes back to where I was born. I was born in New Hampshire. And NASA isn't from New Hampshire. And brings a, a different perspective to the Office of Government. And I think individuals who have been born and raised in the state ultimately represent. And NASA has never been a part of a small business owner. She's, she's never learned the inner workings of how small business operates. She's never signed the, the front of the check. I think that's an important piece that's missing in Concord right now. The voice of a small business owner 
is being trampled on. One of the reasons I first started to get involved was because of Maggie Hassan's idea to implement the LLC tax signed by Governor Lynch. We got that bill repealed. A rally of 2,600 small business owners around the state stand up and sign a petition and say, no, can't tax this. And they know how to win in the Congress. They know how to do these things. Governor Maggie Hassan bought and paid for a democratic machine. She will do anything and everything that President Obama tells her to do. We've seen that. I will be better because I will tell Washington no. Thank you. What is your vision for the future of New Hampshire? My vision for the future of New Hampshire is a vision ever since I got when I came here 15 years ago to run a great company over the National Sanders Associates. The vision I have is for restoring the New Hampshire advantage, economically and otherwise, and in the process, restoring what Judy and I came to love when we came here. And when our son followed us here from college, and started family, the best place to live, the best place to work, the best place to raise a family, and the best place to do business. But if we don't get this economy turned around, we don't stay laser focused on what it's going to take to create jobs in our state, then just like the last eight years, We'll see young people continue to leave our state for opportunities and jobs elsewhere. Over 106,000 of our citizens commute out of the state every day to go to work. Because of the oppressive business climate, regulations, and burdens of taxes. My vision for the future is back to the future where we have double-digit economic growth and people are coming to the Hampshire world, not leaving. Thank you very much, Mr. Hammond. Okay, I'm going to talk to you. What is your vision for the future of New Hampshire? General John Stark said, that's the words, right? Live free or die. Death is not the worst of all evils. My vision for the future of New Hampshire is one where we have less government and more freedom. Ultimately, allowing the state and the free market to determine what our state looks like by removing the state government out of it. Over the last 10 years, we have seen the fastest, most aggressive growth of state government. And we all know that when state government grows, the citizens' individual freedom, citizens' economic freedom shrinks over and over and over again. We have seen this consistently over the last 10 years the individual's freedom decreasing consistently. My vision is one of less state government, less regulation, lower taxation, to breathe life once again into our economy, create an environment that incentivizes entrepreneurs, sets the creators free, allows them to do what they do best in creating jobs, innovating. That is what the future of New Hampshire looks like if I am your government. And I will fight every single day to ensure that we don't just have our state for the, for, the, for the simple model. Rather, we will enact policies that will allow every member of our state to live free and to prosper. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We have a couple of more questions. That's why we have the floor up here. Um, right now, we're going to go back to our order. Mr. Hackenstein. Please comment on the Attorney General's decision that Maggie Hassan returned the campaign donation she took from the union pack. I think it's wrong. She certainly should return it, but what I'm opposed to is why wasn't she charged? It was a violation of our law. It was a clear violation of our law. And there should be more outrage, frankly, 
asking several over contributions that they has to see. We need to change the ethical context in common. I propose a seven step, what I call the state house step. Putting ethical leadership at the forefront of our governor's position. Making sure contributions from PACs cannot exceed contributions from individuals. Making sure the governor's office is not immune to the right to know. And making sure there are real penalties associated with breaking the law. I think the Attorney General was derelict in his duties and frankly had a extreme conflict of interest in the decision he made. Thank you very much, Mr. Hathaway.
They then work with the legislature as they draft bills, submit bills, refine the budget process. You work with the executive council, and ultimately, as the governor of New Hampshire, you become the number one salesperson for the state of New Hampshire. Traveling into every boardroom that you possibly can, working to attract businesses to our state. That is one of the fundamental tasks of our government. But we need to have something to sell in New Hampshire. We have the highest, one of the highest corporate tax rates in the country. We have some of the highest workers' compensation insurance rates in the country. We have some of the highest health insurance rates in the country. We've got to fix these issues to make New Hampshire once again attractive to these businesses. And when that is done, we will compete with the likes of Texas. Governor Barrett. He's even meeting with businesses while he's here trying to get them to move to Texas. <laughs> All right? No. You need a governor who's willing to go out and start to attract businesses and move them to New England. Thank you, Governor. Crook TV.